guys, it's Katie. It has been a really long time since I've posted a favorites video of any kind on my channel. So that's what we're here to do today. I have a few physical items and then a few things that you need to know about. So strap in. Okay, I'm just gonna get this first one over with because it's kind of controversial. And it is controversial because it is a Jeffree Star Cosmetics product. Now, I was really into these and still am. And this was before like the recent events that have kind of transpired that I don't know. So take it with a grain of salt. Jeffree Star is problematic. He's controversial. And being a fan of his previously, that's kind of just something that you, I don't know. It's like I rode the wave with him. I'm just saying, I don't necessarily 100% support him anymore and I feel a little weird about him and I haven't bought anything since all this, but I do just wanna shout these out. These are the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Lip Scrubs. These are so good. I'm gonna call them the best lip scrub that I've ever used. I've used ones from Lush. I've used like a Sarah Hap one that I actually really didn't care for. And I know she's like a big lip brand. So these come out, they're the Velour Lip Scrubs and they come out with every collection he launches typically. And they come out in a variety of scents. I have two here. I have Blue Raspberry Sucker and then I have Pineapple Juice. So those were both from different collections. They are big containers and they are filled to the brim when you get them. So you're not wasting any product. They smell so good. They really, really, really do a nice job of exfoliating your lips. They're so easy to use. And the best part is that they taste delicious and you can just like rub them on, rub, 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 and lick it right off. I mean, you can wipe it off, but if there's like leftovers or if you just want to, you can lick it off. So these are incredible. I feel like other lip scrubs I've used in the past, they're harder to get off. They just don't look fully as well. They're just more of a pain. And honestly, these are just like fun. They're cheap. There's fun flavors. Again, I know it's a little bit of an ugh thing right now, but they are really good. The next thing I wanna move on to is a cleansing oil. I have finally found a makeup removing like balm oil, like something in that vein that actually works. I feel like I've tried everything. I've used the Clinique Take the Day Off, which is raved about and it's fine, it's good. I've, I've always liked it. It's probably even been in like a favorites of the past, who knows. I've used the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Makeup. I actually have another cleansing oil that I do like and I thought that was the best one up until this. And that one is the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate. I've used my cellar waters. I've used all kinds of things, but nothing, and I mean nothing will get your makeup off like the Fourth Ray Beauty BFD cleansing oil. First of all, this is a ColourPop brand, so it's cheap. They sell this on the ColourPop website as well as on Ulta. It is the like ColourPop skincare brand. Okay, if you don't know what a cleansing oil is or a cleansing balm, basically when you have a full face of makeup like I do right here, or even less makeup, you would get in the shower or wherever at your sink, put some in your hand, take off all the makeup with the oil. That's step one. Then you go in and actually cleanse your skin with a cleanser, great. Every time I've ever done that with all those ones that I previously mentioned, I have mascara streaks underneath, maybe still some brow product. Everything else, yeah, it mostly comes off, but there's always some schmutz around here. Not with this. All you need is like, I don't know, between two to four pumps and just like take time to concentrate on your eyes, on your brows, which I've always done with every other product and I come out of the shower with nothing. I don't need one drop more of eye makeup remover, nothing. So it doesn't irritate my eyes. It doesn't, I don't think it smells like anything. Uh oh, I just splashed it all over myself. Yeah, it pretty much doesn't have a smell. It is the goat. Like I finally believe in cleansing oil. I want, if they ever discontinue this, I'm gonna be truly heartbroken. Another affordable like skincare product thing that I want to tell you guys about is this. It's from The Ordinary. It is the 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. Okay, here's the story with this. Face oil. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people still don't really have an opinion or know what they are. 
Face oil is something that I feel really helps with skincare. It's typically something that you use a serum, then an oil, then your moisturizer. Some oils are more specifically for like, there's oils that have retinol or things in them. That's not what this is. I just wanted like a run of the mill face oil. I've used the Lancer face oil before. Oh, I really like that face oil, but it is so expensive. Then I had one from GoTo, I think is what it's called. It was, it was nice. It was good, whatever. Then I went on Ulta, looked through the ordinary products because they are really affordable and got this oil. They have three types of oils. They have this one, which is the rose hip seed. They have an argan oil. And then I kind of forget what the other one is. They're all like, I don't know, between six and $9. I forget the exact amounts. I couldn't really figure out the difference. I was just like, okay, which one do I get? Read the reviews. They were all pretty good. I ended up going for this one, the rose hip seed oil. This stuff is so legit. It is just like this thin yet incredibly hydrating, deliciously moisturizing, non-irritating, beautiful oil that leaves you so healthy and like glowy and hydrated and not too oily. Like I love this stuff. It's so cheap, doesn't really have a smell, perfect consistency, bada bing, bada boom. When I, I think I've gone through two bottles of these. When I went to order it a third time, they were out of this one. And so I had to try one of the other ones and I was like, okay, whatever. Like I'm sure they're all great. I opted for the argan oil, nowhere near as good. Like it's fine, I'm using it up right now and I'm already ordering another one of these because they're back in stock. The argan oil, first of all, I don't care for the smell. It's thicker, so it's just more heavy and doesn't absorb as well. It hasn't broken out my skin or done anything bad to my skin, but it just doesn't like do the amazing glowy hydrating things that this one does and like for the price of this how this is I think one fluid ounce no yeah one fluid ounce so it's not a jumbo bottle I definitely say I go through it about once one a month because I use it morning and night like I love this stuff please don't sell it out but like last physical product I'm going to talk about is a perfume if you know me I'm a perfume freak there's a little uh, glance into my perfume tower. This is a Jo Malone fragrance that I discovered last summer. It's part of their intense cologne intense version, which is the black bottles. And this one is called Jasmine Sandbeck and Marigold. Quick background. I am extremely picky with floral scents. I don't tend to gravitate towards them. Okay. So I discovered this last summer when I was home in Phoenix and Admittedly, part of what I love so much about this is the scent memory that is attached to it, but I'm obsessed with the fragrance as well. So I remember I was in a Blue Mercury store in my hometown and I was smelling all the different Jo Malone's because I love Jo Malone and I'm always looking for like new fun combinations or like my next fragrance. I didn't have any of the intense ones yet. I went to smell this one and I was like a jasmine scent, like a floral jasmine, like no thanks, but like, let me smell it smelled it and I was like, wait a second. It's strangely not my typical vibe, yet there's something really drawing me in here. Kept smelling it, kept smelling it, kept smelling it. And it was this, again, that same weird, I was like, this is normally not what I go for, but like, why am I captivated by it? Put it on, I'm like, wow, I really love this. They gave me a sample. It became like my scent of the two weeks or whatever that I was home in Phoenix. And it then went on my never ending list of fragrances that I wanna own. So when this year's Sephora sale came around, I got it. I got just the smaller one, but I got it. This stuff has such a nice summery, it just smells like summer to me. It has vibes of like some of those beachy fragrances. Like you might see some like replica, replica beach walk or like, I don't think there's frangipani in this, which is a very uh, summery note, but it's just this beautiful floral, summery, fresh, yet intense fragrance. And I do want to say this stuff is intense. I know it's called cologne intense, but if you have experience with like regular Jo Malone colognes, they don't have the best staying power. Like they are whatever, they're beautiful, they're lovely, blah, blah, blah. Some have better staying power than others, but they're like, you can just go to town and douse yourself. 
not with this. And I am not afraid of fragrance. Like I just like go to town. Literally, literally I need like one spray of this. And I am not a one spray type of gal. Like I don't care if it's the most expensive bottle I have or the most potent bottle I have prior to this. I don't care. I'll, I'll spray on easily five, six, seven sprays. Like that's just how I am. I have my little pulse points that I like to reach. Cologne Intense from Jo Malone, they mean it. It's intense. So it has a better staying power than the regular. I don't know if I'm doing a great job of explaining, but to me, it's just like this floral. Okay, this is like a perfect summer nighttime. Ugh, like you're going to a barbecue. I mean, okay, this is all in like a non-COVID world, obviously, let's just imagine. But you're going to like a barbecue, like a backyard party. Are you going on a date? You're doing something fun and like a group of people and you're gonna stand out. You're gonna be like the sexy summer girl. So <laughs> there's that. Okay, everything else that I have to tell you about is just um, things that you need to know about. So let's start with an app that I've recently discovered that is a game changer and that is the Libby app. It is an app that connects with your local library. All you need is a library card. And holy buckets, you're gonna have access to pretty much every book ever. You have access to the Kindle version or just like the, you know, one on your phone. You can either send it to your Kindle. I don't have a Kindle or you can just do it on the Kindle app on your phone or just read it, whatever. Or you can do the audiobook version. I so far have only dabbled with the audiobooks because I am a massive fan of autobiographies in audiobook format. I don't necessarily love fiction or I haven't dabbled too much into listening to fiction books. I prefer to sit there and read those and I really love physical copies of books, whatever. But audiobooks of autobiographies, I want them all. I want to hear everyone's story. I don't care who you are. Like if you have an audiobook, uh, an autobiography, oh my gosh, that gets confusing and you're reading it and you have something to say, like I'm here for it. So I used to have Audible gosh, so many odd or audio, audio book. Audio, blah, blah, blah. I used to have Audible, which is $15 a month. And the cool thing there, they have Audible originals. You get to keep the books forever. You can exchange a book if you like aren't liking it. Like there's some perks with it, but it adds up and you may or may not have time. I don't know. Libby, I have already soared through so many audiobooks, and sometimes they are I know they're just files, but they are based on your library's actual inventory. And so sometimes there is a wait list of, you know, that book's going to be checked out for the next four weeks. You're going to have to wait, but like, that's fine. It's free. You can just tag it like to come back to, or you can put a hold on it for when it does become available. And once it comes available, like it's yours. My mom has, I told my mom about it and she is big with Kindle books. And so she's been using it just to like read Kindle books too. There are a few fiction books that I want to try to read on it, like with just the Kindle version. I haven't done that yet, but it's just so cool to know that I can. And I'm a big reader. Like I'm a big book girl. I love books, but I also like, and I am the type of person, again, I like a physical book. I like to own books, but I, I kind of like the idea of like, I don't know, not every single book that I'm interested in is one that I want to spend my money on and then own that seems a little bit wasteful you know what I mean like some books I I happily like I want to have a physical copy I want to put it on my shelf I want to be able to revisit it or lend it out to a friend or whatever but Libby is a game changer if you are a reader you need it you need it that's that's that another thing that I think you need to know about is a podcast I have been listening to called the Bradshaw Boys let me back it up. This podcast you need, need, need to listen to if you are a fan of Sex and the City. I have always said that Sex and the City and Boy Meets World are my two favorite shows of all time. And therefore, if you are anything like me and you really enjoy Sex and the City, you need to listen to this podcast. So this podcast is these three straight men who are friends and they've never seen Sex and the City. They live in New York and they've never seen it. So they decide to sit together, watch the pilot and discuss. Simple enough. I mean, so many people have podcasts. Simple enough idea, right? They are my favorite people ever. Like it is just so funny. It is so insightful as the show goes on. So I'm pretty sure they're still in real time, like not all the way done with series six 
or season six, which is sadly the end of the, the show. It wasn't that long of a running of a show. But as it goes on, like they get, I'm pretty sure Kristen Davis is on one of their future episodes. Like they get all these random guests on. Some of them are guests I haven't heard of or whatever. They're just random people who live in New York or random other comedians. But I've liked every single episode I've listened to. It is like, if you're like me, and you know these episodes inside and out, you don't even need to like watch it along with them. They do give a synopsis of each episode and then they like discuss, they unpack it and like dissect it. But oh my gosh, it is just endlessly, endlessly entertaining. It's laugh out loud funny, which that makes me feel like I'm like, a, I don't know, on a movie trailer or something like laugh out loud funny. But it is, it's hilarious. It's so easy to listen to. It's something that I throw on if I'm just like gonna do something quick or I don't know. It's like, it's good to listen to on a walk or when I'm like getting ready for bed or doing folding laundry or whatever. Like it is just juicy and entertaining. And it's not a podcast at all where like I fully will stop in the middle of an episode and then like not come back to it for several days or whenever I'm available next. And then I just pop right back into it. It's not one where, you know what I mean? I it, like, I don't know. It's just so good. It's so funny. It's so entertaining. I just think it's an absolute must have. I, I don't think I'm selling it that well, except for just telling you that it's good. So if you like sex in the city, you need, you need to listen to it. The Bradshaw Boys. I listen on Spotify. You can listen wherever podcasts can be found. Okay, last thing I'm going to tell you about. This is actually like a personal specific thing that like me and my friends, whew, it's warm, that me and my friends have been doing since quarantine and coronavirus and everything started. Um, by the way, if you see this, um, it's not real, this tattoo, but I am thinking of getting a tattoo. So I'm just kind of like trying it on for size. It's a temporary tattoo. No, I did not draw that. I also have one behind my ear. You can't really see it. Anyway, okay. Me and my friends started this thing called Movie Club. <laughs> movie Club has evolved so much from the beginning of, of quarantine. But let me just give you a little breakdown of what it is and allow me to suggest that you start a movie club of your own. So it consists of four of us. We all know each other from Disney. Like we've all worked for Disney in one way, shape or form. Um, we all kind of have our individual relationships like throughout that in different ways. But so it's myself and my friends, David, Sarah, and Lori. You have probably seen them on this channel before. You've definitely seen David. And I think Sarah and Lori have been on here before back in the California days. The way it works is there's four of us and we have an order. And when it is your turn in the order, you get to pick the theme. So for example, this week actually, or this theme was mine. And the theme was really popular movies that you yourself have never personally seen. And so I started it off. When you pick the theme, you get the first pick of the movie. And my pick was Jaws, which by the way, fabulous movie. So glad I am finally with the times and have seen Jaws. Then tonight we're watching another one and it's Lori's pick. And so her pick for that category is going to be Black Swan. She's never seen Black Swan. I have. It is a popular movie, right? And then the next person, I think it's Sarah, um, gets to go next. She does her pick for that. And then David. So once we get through all four of us, then we go on to the next person in the rotation, which is Lori, and she will get to pick a theme. So some of the themes we've done already have been, we did a theme that had to do with time. So anything that had to do with like time travel or just like a way to interpret time. We watched 2001 A Space Odyssey. We watched Peggy Sue Got Married. Let's see, we had a week of international films, which was like formally called foreign films. But uh, I think the more, the better way to say it going forward is international films. We had a week of that. We had a week of, let's see, the first theme I ever picked was movies that had won for Oscar Best Picture. Uh, we have done campy movies. We have done independent films. Like there's so many fun categories. And then the other cool thing is that we have this shared note in our phones where we can edit and add theme ideas. And then we add a check mark every time we finish a theme. So it's just so fun. And so basically what we do is we do it twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday. And we have a rough time set, usually between like 7 or 8 p.m., like depending. 
and then we start the movie all together. We count it down, one, two, three, go. We text throughout, and then we FaceTime afterwards. And it has just been so much fun. It's been a way to like force myself and all of us really out of our comfort zones of movies that we wouldn't maybe normally watch or had even heard of. And it's just really bonded the four of us. It's just been so nice having them as like a constant, like we check in with things. We, I mean, honestly, the other night we had this crazy group text going where we were talking about Jaws and then we got into politics and then we got into some other what happens in movie club stays in movie club type stuff. Like it's just, it's just so fun, so nice. Another theme we did was movies based on a book. I think what I'm going to pick next, if someone doesn't pick it before mine, is going to be like 90s classics because I am in the mood to watch either my all-time favorite, which is 10 Things I Hate About You, or Bring It On. I haven't seen that in forever and I just think it'd be fun. And so it's just so fun. I can't even explain it to you. I mean, I just did <laughs> the best that I could. But if that sounds at all interesting to you, I recommend it. Even if it's your own movie club with just yourself, hey, movie club is open to all. Like, it's just a great idea. Give yourself a theme, pick some movies to watch within that theme, rotate throughout, like, I don't know. It's just so much fun. So those are my favorites. Thank you all for watching and listening. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns down below, and I will see you next time. Love you.